I know that most of you are probably picking up your pitchforks and torches and rushing to the comment section just from reading the title of this video, but bear with me here. Genesis Rhapsodos. The name alone sends shivers down the spines of FF7 fans everywhere, but not for the same reason that a name like Sephiroth does. Genesis is a very divisive character, so much so that lots and lots of people hate Crisis Core with a burning passion thanks to this Visual K tryhard. If you don't already know somehow, Genesis is modeled after Japanese rock sensation Gact, which is fine and all, lots of games model their characters after real people, like for example, Devil May Cry and the Resident Evil remakes, as well as Metal Gear. But for many fans, the problem comes in when Genesis ultimately ends up being a half-assed, bland, edgy Mary Sue who essentially amounts to, what if Gact's FF7 OC was actually in the game? Look, he's Soldier First Class, the highest rank that soldier can achieve, and oh, what's that? He's friends with Sephiroth? Well, that's just freaking awesome. That's not all? You mean to tell me that he takes away the one key trait that made Sephiroth's final boss fight in the original Final Fantasy VII iconic by he himself having a single angel wing? Sounds great. Let's make him the main antagonist and complete focus in our prequel to one of gaming's largest masterpieces of all time. Of course, you and I, all that awaits you is a somber morrow. No matter where the winds may blow. Needless to say, Lots of people hate Genesis for just about all the reasons I just listed, as well as many others, and they are all extremely valid. That being said, I think that Genesis is a perfect example of wasted potential. Square Enix only got one thing right with this character, and that's his design, of which that point is in fact a hill I'm willing to die on. Surely they must have spent a ton of money to get someone like Gact to appear as his own character in the game, so why would they just let this go to waste by giving him a short straw? which is precisely why there's nothing but room for improvement. Alright, Gact, we're ready. Go on and show us what that redemption you've been singing of is truly about. Also, this is the point in the video where I tell you that there are spoilers for Final Fantasy VII Remake in this video, so go ahead and click away if that's something that bothers you and all that good stuff. Anyhow, as many of you may know, in the ending of the remake, you fight and sort of defeat Sephiroth himself, the absolute baddest baddie in the whole game, which is really cool and fine, but they couldn't possibly get away with throwing him in as the final boss a second time. It would lessen the impact to his character and make it feel like a cheap nostalgia trigger that Square is throwing because they know it's safe, and people like the scary silver-haired man. So they need to top it somehow. They have to either escalate or subvert it. The best way to do that is to shift the focus to another villain, and trust me, this franchise has quite a bit of them to pick from, and unfortunately they are all related to Sephiroth in one way or another. I propose that either they bring back an older villain or make a new one altogether, both of which I'm going to cover in this video. Now Genesis is a great pick because at the time of the events of the original Final Fantasy VII, we know for a fact that he is still alive given how he was carried away by deep ground at the end of Crisis Core. And then there's that whole secret ending to Dirge of Cerberus, which is the absolute latest entry in the timeline of Final Fantasy VII, where Genesis just kind of shows up, spreads his wing, and takes away Vice, the final boss of that game, while he tells us that somehow Vice is his brother. And not only is that the last time we hear from Genesis ever, but it is the absolute last event that we see in the timeline from Final Fantasy VII, excluding the whole scene of Red XIII running towards a desolate Midgar 500 years later in a world with no humans. His character arc goes unconcluded. It's as if Square Enix intended to make another game in the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, but never got around to it. Now, if you've been paying attention to the remake and the numerous theories around it, as well as the words of the writers themselves in the Ultimania, you would know that the remake series is more than just a remake, as it is in fact a sequel as well. Is that confusing? Trust me, we don't even know the half of it. Remake has been confirmed to have multiple timelines within its story, so anything is possible, really. Though my main point here is that Remake has made a large attempt to reference many parts of the compilation, from advertisements for the Benora White Apples that appear in the first reactor, to the literal manifestations of Kadaj, Laws, and Yazoo that appear shortly before the final boss of the game. The amount of detail that they put into letting you know that they recognize the compilation and are integrating it into the main story is astounding. Do you really think that they just opt to forget about that secret ending of Dirge of Cerberus? Hell no! They're very likely sitting there in their houses, brainstorming from a safe distance, of course. Just exactly how are they going to tie all that into the remake series? I'm telling you this, 
Just imagine in Remake Game 2, you encounter Roche, and he's been promoted to a first-class soldier, and that's great! He's all badass and ready to fight, but you encounter him once again, and he's already experiencing cellular degradation, much earlier than anticipated due to a botched experimentation by Hojo. He's freaking out and trying to find a way to survive, so in a fit, he fights Cloud and begs him to share his S-type cells with him. Fast forward a bit, and the next time you encounter Roche, he's fine and eating a Benora white apple, and then suddenly, Genesis walks around the corner and reveals himself to the main party. And you can only imagine the level at which all of his clones will play into this. Hell, I don't care, maybe this could be going on in the alternate timeline where Zack lives, if seeing Genesis meet the main cast isn't something that you'd be too keen on seeing. I think that bringing him back is a phenomenal move, and this time they actually have a chance to flesh him out and make him feel like a much better, grounded character, much like they did with the rest of the characters in the remake. Make him feel real, and less like a Mary Sue. Either do that or give Roche a greater role, both of which are things that I, as a fan of Final Fantasy VII, would love to see. There are ways that it could be done well, and I have full confidence that Square can pull it off, no doubt. Hell, you could just have the party go to the Gold Saucer and see a play of Loveless, starring Jesse, and have a Marco-style This Guy R6 clone show up in the audience next to Cloud and have him see a flashback of Genesis and start to lose it. After all, he's got Zack's memories. Why should his terrorizing visions be limited specifically to Sephiroth? Anyway, time for me to hop down from my soapbox and stop spewing my blasphemous advocations for the return of Genesis to the masses. What do you guys think? Would you like to see them bring Genesis back so long as they do it right, or would you just want him to fade away like a faint memory? No matter what happens though, we're all aboard this train and Square's the conductor, so we'll just have to wait and see where they're taking us. Now to explore the other possibility that I brought up. A completely new villain. One that no one is capable of anticipating, as it would be something that doesn't exist in the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. Let's say they introduce this new villain. How strong do they want to make them? Do they want them to be a commanding Shinra officer or a Turk whose power rivals Rufus's and run the risk of pulling an anime filler arc and creating a forgettable throwaway villain? Or do they want to make something more impactful and threatening by creating a character that's just as strong as Sephiroth, if not stronger? Would this feel shoehorned in? Would it feel like something that could exist naturally in FF7's world? There are lots of things that could go wrong. Ask anyone who played the remake. They will tell you that Roche, the one new villain they created, feels like wasted potential within the continuity of the Midgar arc. The last thing you want is for this new villain to be underwhelming, which is why it's safer to bring back an old villain that just wasn't up to par. Either that or make Roche's involvement in the story far greater. I think that the best way to go about this is to kill two birds with one stone. Give Roche a reason to want to hunt down Cloud by having him cooperate with Genesis. Have Genesis refer to Cloud as a cheap knockoff in relation to Zack. Really play him up and give him a solid presence so that he doesn't feel too forced. Now, at the end of the day, anything that I or anyone else says amounts to nothing but crackpot fanfiction and should not be taken to heart, as none of us truly know what Square is planning but Square. But one thing is clear, Square wanted people to talk and speculate. That's why they made the ending of Remake the way that they did, to build up hype through the means of expectations and what they want to see. Perhaps even to take community feedback into account when writing future titles. I for one would be extremely happy to see Genesis make a return and get a chance to shine, even though he's the reason that Crisis Core feels like a steaming pile of garbage. But hey, that's just my opinion, and I hope to hear yours in the comments below. For more videos like this one, please check out my friend, the Night Sky Prince, as he has many videos covering popular FF7 theories, as well as coverage on news directly from Nomura and Kitase themselves. His content is very thought-provoking, and his voice isn't the only thing that's just plain sexy. I'm seriously simping over this king, and you should be too! Anyway, if you liked this video, be sure to let me know, and please click the subscribe button and the bell icon below. This has been Logie from Trifecta TV, and I'll see you all in the next one.